ऑनरेबल जस्टिस श्री ए जी है जज ऑफ दी सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया ऑनरेबल जस्टिस श्री संदीप मेहता जज सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया ऑनरेबल श्री जस्टिस मनेन्द्र मोहन श्रीवास्तव चीफ जस्टिस राजस्थान हाई कोर्ट ऑनरेबल लॉ मिनिस्टर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ राजस्थान एंड हिमसेल्फ एन एडवोकेट श्री जोगाराम पटेल ऑनरेबल श्री मनन कुमार मिश्रा चेयरमैन बार काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया मनन जी आपका रेफरेंस कर रहा हूँ श्री तुषार मेहता सोलिसिटर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया श्री भुवनेश शर्मा जी चेयरमैन बार काउंसिल ऑफ राजस्थान श्री एस सी श्रीमाली को चेयरमैन बार काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया श्री जे एस चौधरी कन्वीनर एंड मेंबर बार काउंसिल ऑफ राजस्थान श्री देवेंद्र सिंह राठौर वाइस चेयरमैन बार काउंसिल ऑफ राजस्थान श्री राजेश पवार को कन्वीनर एंड मेंबर बार काउंसिल ऑफ राजस्थान डिस्टिंग डिस्टिंग प्रेजिडेंट एंड फॉर्मर जजेस मेंबर्स ऑफ द बार काउंसिल एट प्रेजेंट एंड दो इन दिस पोजिशन डिस्टिंग ऑडियंस it is a profound honor to address this gathering on this momentous occasion the plenum jubilee celebration of the rajasthan high court i have the honor and privilege to have a deep emotive sense of belonging to this elevated constitutional institution and owe it to all that i have been and I am alongside my parents and alma mater sun school chittorgarh platinum jubilee celebration is indeed a cherished milestone in the journey of any institution all the more for one that is amongst fundamental pillars of our democracy honorable members distinguished audience this is an occasion to remember with deep sense of gratitude the ones who shaped the institution to be what it is today my salutations to them even angels will fear to refer to names as there is possibility some worthy names may be missed out inadvertently and be hurtful to my conscience we all are proud of them judges and lawyers now and earlier who happen to be part of this august institution also a befitting occasion distinguished audience an occasion to reflect on the principles that underpin our democratic institutions their alignment with our rich cultural heritage and hence focus on the contemporaneously relevant brief of the moment role of judiciary in emerging india <coughs> distinguished audience bharat home to one sixth of humanity has rich research traditions rooted deeply in our cultural and spiritual heritage spanning thousands of years judicial system of a nation and its functionality define its democratic vibrancy an independent robust justice system is quite essential to any shape of governance as this is lifeline of life as such after independence the nation came to have constitutionally structured hierarchical judiciary a feature to note by virtue of article 227 of the constitution every high court i am quoting shall have superintendence 
over all courts and tribunals throughout the territories in relation to which it exercises a jurisdiction and court. Supreme Court has no such superintendence over high courts and tribunals as per constitutional ordinance. I would, however, seek to still introspective, reflective focus by the concern that the institution of the High Court and that of its Chief Justice is spinally fundamental to justice delivery and any dilution perceptional or otherwise would weaken judiciary as pillar of our democracy. My reference to this extent is sufficient given the occasion and given the distinguished audience and their involvement both with the constitution and the institutions, I leave it at that for your thoughts. Role of judiciary in emerging India, the subject of the moment, is pivotal and critical to sustaining and blossoming of democratic values and development of the nation. Let me first state of the nation at the moment. We all can raise our head in pride. The nation is on the exponential unprecedented rise. The economic surge is continual. Our nation is a lead nation in the world, a favorite global destination of investment and opportunity. Honorable members, what I see today was beyond dream, even contemplation of people of my generation. Economy, just a decade ago, we were considered one of the fragile five economies on the brink. What a leap in a decade, India today is positioned ahead of the UK, Canada, Brazil and France. And distinguished audience is on track to overtake Japan and Germany. We are now the third largest economy in terms of purchasing power and over foreign exchange reserves stand well over 600 billion US dollars. When I was a member of parliament in 89 and a minister, the size of our economy was smaller than that of city of London or Paris. Our foreign exchange then was dwindling around 1 billion US dollars and our gold in physical form had to be airlifted to be placed to two Swiss banks. We indeed have come a long way beyond a dream and contemplation of people of my generation. Distinguished audience, please take note, global accolades are pouring in from the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank and the World Economic Forum and the like. The World Bank has praised India for achieving its financial inclusion and let me tell you financial inclusion means 500 million bank accounts for the first time. 100 million farmers getting direct transaction in their accounts three times a year. And World Bank says India has achieved its financial inclusion objectives within an impressively short span of six years, a feat that typically requires, according to the World Bank, five decades to accomplish. Similarly, distinguished audience, the International Monetary Fund, and there was a time when our neighboring countries know about it. They talked to the IMF for rescheduling. They talked to the IMF, their difficulties. But what does the International Monetary Fund say about us? It has recognized India, our Bharat, as a prime favorite destination for investment and growth opportunities. World Economic Forum, a serious interactive platform, is confident that our Bharat will be a developed nation by 2047. I may not be around, most of you will be, some of you may not be. I am confident it will happen earlier than what they say. As per the IMF, India's development of a world-class digital public infrastructure serves as a model for other nations 
undergoing digital transformation. I know for sure and out of my interaction with global leaders, they look up to India, they seek our assistance. We have a memorandum of understanding with them. That is where we have come. India has more than 800 million internet users and per capita mobile data consumption last year. Please take note, distinguished audience was more than that of USA and China taken together. Distinguished audience, all this is not limited to the geographical territory of Bharat. Our UPI, Unified Payments Interface, a system that powers multiple bank accounts into a single mobile application, is now adopted by Sri Lanka, Mauritius, France, UAE, Singapore, Bhutan, Nepal, and counting is on. Just imagine how extensively it is used by ordinary citizens. Honorable members, I am used to calling Rajya Sabha members as honorable members, but here it is honorable members of the audience. All this I am emphasizing with a purpose. We are no longer a nation with a potential or a promise. We are a nation on way to celebrating the centenary of our independence in 2047, more than being a developed nation. In this marathon march, where all our stakeholders and those present before me and members of the legal fraternity are stakeholders who can move the situation faster. The three pillars of democracy, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary, undoubtedly and constitutionally, have critical role. In this premise, I have to come to the subject of the day. In this premise, doctrine of separation of powers needs scrupulous adherence. Distinguished audience, we have from knowledge and wisdom of history. It is embedded deeply in our civilization ethos of thousands of years. Power, authority in an individual or an institution is optimally productive while those at the helm of affairs are cognizant of limitations and tempering it with morality and propriety. The historian and moralist, and most often we have quoted him, I am referring to Lord Acton. He wrote a letter in 1887 to Bishop Mandel Crichton. I quote, power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. This, my friends, most of, most of you have noticed. But the letter contains another expression, great man, are almost always bad men." Unquote. These institutions, I am referring to three pillars of our democracy. These institutions, if rendered vulnerable, would imperil our democracy and thereby derail our development, developmental trajectory. There are forces, and these forces inimical to our nation, operating from within and without have pernicious agenda, sinister designs that are not easy to instantly discern. We might be welcoming them in any of these three institutions without knowing their real intention, thinking they are our well-wishers. Fact, distinguished audience, is otherwise. I must invite your attention. Endeavors to infuse a narrative that what happened few days ago in our neighborhood is bound to happen in our Bharat is deeply concerning. How can a citizen of this country, having been in parliament, one belonging to distinguished legal fraternity, the other seen enough of Indian Foreign Service, both had the occasion to hold positions of critical consequence in governance as ministers. Take no time in saying what happened in neighborhood 
will happen in India. Be on watch out. I am talking to very distinguished audience, an audience that is discerning. I leave it at that. One of the operational mechanism of these anti-national forces, and this is now more than apparent. They operate, and their mechanism is to hide their legitimate actions using platforms of our fundamental constitutional institutions. You know more than I do. Our institutions are being exploited by these forces to set up float narratives that are not only anti-national, but aimed at derailing the nation is democracy. Who can dispute today India is the only country in the world that is having that kind of economic rivalry and has? Never in the history of any country there have been accolades pouring in day in and day out. There is a country on the rise on every aspect, from sea to land to space and air. Be on the watch. Honorable, distinguished audience, in a scenario like this, let us work together. Let us work in together, in togetherness. Let us work looking through one prism where we always see our nation first. National interest can't be calibrated. It is the supreme precedence, the only precedence and we are committed to nation being first before anything else. <laughs> and therefore, distinguished audience, let us work to insulate our institutions from these nefarious designs that seek to destroy our democracy. And if they manage to make some inroad, don't observe silence, neutralize them because your silence will resonate in the ears of future generations and they will say what our forefathers were doing. Could they not rise to the occasion mentally and otherwise? <laughs> Let me now refer to high and lows of journey so far of these institutions, but for the subject I'm limiting it only to judiciary and I'm referring on the anvil of the doctrine I had referred to a while ago. India takes pride in nurturing a robust independent judiciary that has ever been in the aid of sustaining and blossoming democratic values, with one painful exception. And we should never forget that exception. And that was during draconian darkest period of our history since independence, the emergency proclaimed by then Prime Minister Srimati Indira Gandhi in June 1975. Distinguished audience, we are part of a very elevated institution that is a very strong pillar of democracy. But at that time, then the judiciary at the pinnacle, the highest court of the land I am referring to, the formidable citadel of basic rights of citizens yielded meekly to the British and dictatorship regime of the then Prime Minister Srimati Indira Gandhi. And what it led to? Legs were put behind bars, subjected to indignities. Many of them became Prime Ministers of this country, governors, ministers and contributed in various fields and continue to contribute. <clears throat> it will be absolutely unbecoming of any citizen of this country to forget that dark period. Let me remind you, D-Day at Normandy is never forgotten, remembered every day for a cause. We must never forget it. And since the act was against constitution, against the nation, against citizen, against humanity, can't forgive. The highest court ruled. And what it ruled? 
No one can move any court for un enforcement of rights as long as the emergency lasts. You are distinguished members of legal fraternity, or some of you part of the bench. This was the ruling. No one can move any court for enforcement of rights as long as emergency lasts. And next, emergency can last as long as the government wishes. Liberty was held to ransom of an individual. Apex court ruled those arrested thousands in number across the country without any photo of theirs, except at heart their nationalism, except that at heart they believed in Bharatma. Ruled, you are barred from seeking any judicial help. But what is more important is, in doing so, the Apex Court overturned the verdicts of nine high courts of the country. And in that illustrious list of those nine high courts, this high court figures. I am indeed proud to be part of this institution. During emergency, this institution <laughs> held its ground along with eight others, total nine. And therefore, distinguished audience, the High Court, the High Court of Judicature for Rajasthan holds a place of pride, being amongst the nine Jewel High Courts in the country that here, despite the imposition of emergency, a person could demonstrate that his or her detention arrest was not in compliance with rule of law. But in the Apex Court also, we had a silver lining. The same dissenting voice of Justice Hazar Khanna found resonance, not here, not in the country. In New York Times that reflected I caught, if India ever finds its way back to the freedom and democracy, the world had lost hope. Because the world was ignorant of Indian genius, jail or no jail. Bharat Mata has to be nurtured. It has to blossom as a democracy. But New York Times reflected, I quote, if India ever finds its way back to the freedom and democracy that were proud hallmarks of its first 18 years as an independent nation, someone will surely erect a monument to Justice Achar Khanna of the Supreme Court. Unquote. Never forget these words. Younger people are not aware of it. Make sure every Indian of any age, particularly impressionable minds, come to fully know these developments. Sacrifice of millions of people in this country alone helped it back on democratic rails. It is our lot now. It is on our table. It is our brief now to sustain and blossom democracy. Over the years, there is fortunately emergence of a spinally strong, well-nurtured constitutional democracy at all levels that taken recourse and important enforcement to emergency is ruled out. The nation has matured. Its institutions have grown up. India is the only country in the world that has a structured constitutional democracy at the village level. You have constitutional provision for that at this urban level, part nine and nine capital of the constitution. So now, even if someone gets into the group, the enforceability cannot take place. However, I implore each one of you, particularly the younger generation, never forget eternal vigilance is the price of freedom. And this vigilance must be dictated by your in-depth knowledge of the suffering of lakhs of people in this country during the draconian period of emergency imposed by one individual, the Prime Minister of India, then Srimad Indra Gandhi. Imagine for a moment, if the judiciary at the highest level had not came 
in, had not capitulated to unconstitutional mechanisms, had not yielded to present dictatorship of Shri Indra Gandhi, there would have been no emergency. Our nation would have attained a greater development much before. We would not have to wait for decades. All institutions, therefore, distinguished audience, need to be on guard lest we fall prey another, another time. Distinguished audience, fortunately, the nation is gearing up to thwart and face the challenges. I seek to advert to two significant steps taken in the last decade. Because we can't sit in governance without taking real steps so that such kind of dangers that seek to destroy the very being of Bharat do not crop up. And if they crop up, they are dealt with with nuclear speed. So these two are Constitution Day Government of India under Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his vision and leadership. On 19th November 2015, notified to celebrate November 26th as the Constitution Day. We'll have the 10th celebration in coming months. I call upon every lawyer to make it a point to sensitize other lawyers, young lawyers in particular, law students, about the importance of Constitution Day. Why we have Constitution Day? Why lifeline to life is our Constitution? Similarly, this year the government is old. I call to observe 25th June as Swidhan Hatya Divas as a reminder of what happened when the Constitution of India was trampled over, recklessly trampled over by one individual, not the Council of Ministers. No part of the Constitution was complied. I leave it to your thought process being from legal fraternity. Look at the changes that were effected in the Constitution during emergency. I'll quote one for instance, so that you trigger in your minds an urge to get more details of each of the amendment, not for the sake of arguing before a court of law, but also arguing to yourself or be accountable to your conscience. So much was power in the head, a provision that election of the prime minister is beyond challenge under the Constitution. This defines dictatorship in its enormity. Smidhan Hatya Divas is also a day to pay homage to each and every person who suffered due to excesses of emergency. A phase unleashed, a dark phase of Indian history. These two important events my friends, will generate continual awareness amongst our youth and present generation and keep them well informed of the darkest period of our post-independent history, the draconian emergency. This will also keep alive the spirit and flame of freedom. When I reflect on the role of judiciary in emerging India, I am eased to say, what a travesty of justice. A judicial verdict rendered by Allahabad High Court Justice Sina declaring election of Srimati Indra Nehru Gandhi, then Prime Minister as invalid, triggered imposition of emergency and atrocious unconstitutional act. Second, and the emergency that sabotaged rule of law and constitution got impregnable, impregnable coverage from the highest court of the land in ADM Jabalpur case. What a travesty. A shining example of independence of judiciary emanating from Allahabad High Court. And secondly, what happened at the Apex Court. 
Referring to all this only to indicate role of judiciary in emerging Bharat is critical alongside other institutions. I must make briefly a reference. This country is not governed by optics. To hit the headlines, oh, after four decades, a progeny has risen to that level of consciousness to undo what was done then? No, sir. These issues are too serious to be messaged just in media or attraction. These are issues that touch our mind, heart, soul. Bharat ki atma par chot hui thi. The people have undone it. The people have to safeguard it. Let us be on guard, be ever on guard to avoid another disaster to democracy. This is the role I emphasize for the judiciary. Other things will fall in place. All will do their job. Second, the role of all institutions is well delineated in our constitution. What is the role of legislature is not to one at all. What is the role of judiciary? What is the role of executive known to us? On a lighter note, let me reflect. Legislature and parliament cannot script judgments. We sitting in parliament or people sitting in legislature have no authority to script judicial verdicts. And similarly, I can say with confidence, judiciary cannot make laws or legislate or impart directives that are beyond legislations. Distinguished friends, this is a dangerous trend, trend if there is incursion in the domain of one constitutional institution by the other. The incursion may be subtle. The incursion may be non-invasive. That incursion has the potential to upset the apple cart of democracy. This can potentially enter democracy Distinguished audience, we have to introspect. My question to you, is it happening? I leave this as, we, as a thought for all of you. You think within, is it happening? Are all, instit are all institutions, the legislature, judiciary and the executive operating within their areas or are they in expansion mode? to operate in the area of the other. I leave it as a thought for your minds. Distinguished audience, forces inimical to Bharat, within and without, are in overdrive to impede our growth and operate at multiple levels, tenting, tarnishing, targeting, demeaning our constitutional institutions, falling prey to this is fraught with dangerous consequences. Again, I pose a question for your consideration and thought provocation. Do we see this looming danger? You are the best just to decide. Distinguished audience, I conclude with a quote from Dr. Ambedkar. Dr. Ambedkar had the occasion to reflect many a times in the Constituent Assembly that lasted for three years, little less than three years, and 18 sessions. But this one, on November 25, 1949, was his last address to the Constituent Assembly I caught. I am quoting Father of the Indian Constitution, Dr. B. R. Baker. I quote, what perturbs me greatly is the fact that not only India has once become, before lost her independence, he was not worried that India was lost independence. I continue. But she lost it by the infidelity and treachery of some of her own people in court. The sculptor of Indian constitution had diagnosed that we lost independence because there was infidelity and treachery of some of our own people. 
I further quote him, will it still repeat itself? It was repeated in 1975. I continue, will it still repeat itself? Is this thought which fills me with anxiety? This anxiety is deepened by the realization of the fact that in addition to our old enemies, in the form of caste and creeds, we are going to many political parties with diverse and opposing political creeds. Will Indian place the country above their creed or will they place creed above the country? A question is posed. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar ventures to answer the question posed by himself. I quote, I do not know, he said. But this much is certain that if the parties place creed about country, our independence will be put in jeopardy a second time and probably be lost forever. This eventuality we must all resolutely guard against. We must be determined to defend our independence with the last drop of our blood and coat. Distinguished audience, the man, the sculptor of Indian Constitution, in his last address of the Constitutional Assembly, that never made, made thereafter, it gave the Constitution to us. His worst fears were realized in 1975 and we suffered emergency. And principally because the institution that was supposed to be our protector, the judiciary, failed us. Let us hope and work this does not happen. Personally, I am confident our judicial system is so robust, so independent and meant by people of superior intellect and commitment. This cannot happen. But that does leave us with a reason to be ever vigilant and be on guard. I'll give a small illustration. As vice president, while the sun was at peak, I went to the Indo-Pak border in Badmir. The sun was peak and it was month of harsh summer. I saw that time. Our people were guarding the border. I saw camels being driven. I see people facing the heat, that heat, 46, 47, 8 degree. In that uniform, better ready. All of them were there. There was nobody on the other side. I took a binocular. Nobody could be seen. Our people were alert. And why? Enemy will choose his own time, his own strengths. <coughs> we therefore have to be ready even for a split second. That is the question I am giving to you. And that is something which the judiciary must have in mind. Distinguished audience, the position that I hold and the deeper revolution, revolution connect that I have with judiciary persuade me to contribute by silence on the present scenario which people say is distanced from conventional groove. I put to some members before coming to this place role of judiciary. And one came quickly with one response. Sir, difficult. It is changing by the day. Grateful for your patience, attention, and time. Thank you so much.